Solving FSD has proved a tough nut to crack, and every time a company gets closer, they realize just how far away they are. Back in 2012, everyone thought that their own company would have it solved by 2020, along with the majority of their competitors, at least a handful. And yet here we are in 2024, and it still isn't quite where we expected it to be. I'm joined today by author Paul Foss from Clean Technica, who has a theory that we're going to go through and that might explain some of the issues that we're facing. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. Oh, 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 oh. Paul, good to see you again, my friend. How have you been? Yeah, I've I've been good. Uh, I had a recent article that was uh, a little more critical on our our hopes uh, for FSD than uh, than a lot of the the bulls arguments and it. So when I when I get thoughts that differ from what I'm hearing from everybody else, I I just feel I've got to write an article and get it out of my head. I understand how that goes. Uh, there are some ultra bulls, some hyper bulls, who have. Uh, missed on some of their projections over the years, to put it mildly. And I've seen people claiming without evidence that FSD is solved internally. And I don't believe that's true because if it was, I don't know why they would be expanding the amount of compute they have so dramatic. Uh, so it's good to have a voice of reason uh, here. And by the way, Paul, you um, did you get your Roadster yet? <laughs> Still waiting on that. And uh, I am hoping to get uh, two Roadsters. Uh one at 90% off and, and one free, but uh, no, that, that hasn't come. Okay. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll, if anybody out there knows when those are coming, uh, let us know. Cause uh, we're all very excited. And when you do get yours, I imagine I'll need to come visit you and uh, go out for a, uh, a spin if I can. Or a fly. Uh, or, or a quick flight. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I do not. So uh, as we get, Closer and closer, Elon has suggested that each additional nine doesn't take the same amount of energy. It takes more compute, more power, more resource. Uh, what conclusions are you reaching with that statement? Well, that uh, I, I guess I looked through some of the recent financials, and I know the the plans are to spend uh, ten billion this year, um, and uh, although. I have been very impressed with ability of V12 uh, to be way better than V11. I haven't been as impressed uh, with the progress of 12.1, 12.2, 12.3, 12. I don't have 12.4 yet, but uh, I don't know. In other words, I don't really have any strong evidence either from what I've seen from other people or uh, from driving uh, a Tesla Model Y in, in Tampa or Colorado every day using FSD beta, or I should say supervised, um, that uh, that we're seeing the, the exponential progress that uh, is so frequently uh, professed by, by, I guess, the Uber bill, bulls. Well, we did see a claim recently. A leaked source said that uh, FSD is being optimized for the routes on which the early access influencers are most likely to travel. And I wonder if I made that list because uh, 11 version 11 was suicidal in my town and version 12 works a treat but then i drove six thousand miles around the country and found it doesn't work like that everywhere it works pretty great most places uh, but in some places boy if you are not supervising you will not be long for this world so what uh yeah go ahead yeah uh well i i did see and and i would say tampa florida and denver colorado are, are probably not heavy uh, influencer places. So uh, I, I did see, you know, great gains. I don't know if it's 5X or 10X. I saw great gains from 11 to 12. Uh, I, I see in those in areas, a lot of what other people talk about, it feels uh, very natural. I'm super impressed with how it will watch pedestrians. And to be honest, it's better at predicting if the pedestrians are going to cross in front of me than I am. 
I'm like, oh. wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm maybe 90% accurate and it's about 95% accurate at, at guessing the humans. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I am very amazed at how good it is in, in, uh, in some cases. That's, uh, I've had similar experiences. The one thing that amazed me was when we first got the new visualizations, uh, my kids would watch the screen and they would try and look for ghosts because surely there's going to be someone appear. And actually, I think it was that there was a rumor that a reindeer or Santa or something like that might appear for Christmas. So they're watching the screen. We're driving at night and they're trying to find the Easter egg that we never found. I don't know if it's real. But they kept saying, oh, it sees a person. Oh, no, wait, there is a person because it's dark and we can't see because we're humans uh, and our process of uh, interpreting vision is not necessarily as good as what you can get from a device. So uh, do you think, first of all, I mean, will this be solved? Will will vision alone on hardware three or four actually work? Well, there's a couple questions you've packed into one there. I, I still <laughs> I still think we will get it to work. I'm getting a little more skeptical on the on the version three or four. Um, I mean, I think all my cars have version three. I'm trying not to be too selfish and worry about that. I, I do think if if Tesla gets it to work on version four or version five and people paid 15,000 for version three, I think they really need to do the right thing and somehow get those people up to the version that works. And you mean hardware three, four, and five? Yes. Um, yes. I mean, whatever it takes to get it to work or give the people the refund or, or do something or another round of allowing them to upgrade. Uh, it just wouldn't be very good if uh, all the people who who believed in them uh, then don't get to experience the, uh, it may not be, you know, at the max safety level, but at least at the safety level that's approved to be unsupervised. And so the next question is, do you think it's going to get to the point where in the pursuit of nines, an infinite amount of uh, compute, an infinite amount of energy for compute will no longer be enough. And at some point we just have to say, look, this is as good as it's getting. Well, I mean, I have been following the computer industry for over 40 years and we wouldn't have to, uh, if you need more compute, you don't have to give up. What you have to do is wait a couple years for the next rev. And uh, whether it's Moore's law, I'm not sure Moore's law applies to NVIDIA. I think they probably have a different technology curve they are on, uh, hopefully even better than Moore's law. So I don't think they would have to give up. I think we would just do just like you said, we had high hopes in 2012 that this would be solved by now. I think we would just have to wait another couple years. So that switches over to, I was very happy on the first quarter conference call when they said, yes, we are still going forward with the more affordable, um, and I call it the tiny Y and the tiny three, many other names compact. I think that's important because no matter how close it is, I think there is a non-zero chance that we get to a stall um, it, because it's not there yet. I agree. And it, it, yes, Tesla I agree. Is a business, it doesn't need a growth plan without RoboTaxi. It's a growth plan in the event that RoboTaxi doesn't come out till 2028. It needs certainty. Short, medium-term certainty is what I'm hoping for. I agree that the intermediate compact, the not the true compact, but the model two and a half Y and three uh, would be a, a potentially wise decision. There are a lot of uh, vehicles in Europe that are Mercedes or BMW, but just a little bit shorter. Really, they look like they had the trunk removed and uh, kind of shortened up that way. And that's a good way to make a more affordable vehicle. You're going to drop hundreds of pounds off of it, which can have a cascading effect that uh, makes perhaps the wheels, tires, brakes, suspension all a little bit cheaper. And the battery can be a little smaller. You, you get a bunch of benefits by doing that. But I agree that most of a robo taxi is not a robo taxi. And if you get a, rid of the steering wheel before you can sell it, what are you going to do? And I think that's why we haven't seen progress in construction at Nueva Leon, at, at Giga Mexico, uh, 
so where I probably am when this video is airing. Uh, so there's some concerns there for the, so <laughs> I, I know we've discussed this privately, but I'm going to ask you on the record, when do you expect FSD? <laughs> The non-supervised, of course, right? Right. I mean, let's just say no steering wheel. We, it's so good that we're going to make that oh, car today. No, good, no, no steering, steering wheel. wheel. I guess I am still, even though I'm more pessimistic than others, uh, I would say, so this is a 50% possibility, not, uh, <laughs> you know, I think the most likely would be two and a half years from now. I will give it one helper that it would still it doesn't need a steering wheel but does it have a phone uh austin button where mm -hmm. if it gets stuck in something and it can't figure out i mean you can obviously call a tow truck but why couldn't you do like cruise and phone austin and they have a bank of 100 remote drivers if i, if I do have internet access and they could kind of see oh yeah you got stuck here and for some reason, FSD got confused. I'll back you up, get you back on the road, and then you're, you're good. Tesla hasn't talked about that, but they can work on things that they haven't talked about. Right. And what I would say, so the, the example you're describing is very common for Waymo and Cruz. Maybe it went down an unexpected dead end where there's construction or something is blocking or it for some reason has to make a decision. Uh, that decision is then handed over to a to a real person, uh, not a driver so much as an operator who I assume will look at potential paths and say, do this one and away it goes. So they're not like sitting there with a Xbox controller driving the car. They're just route plan. They're just decision making. And what I wonder about is uh, when we talk scalability, that's great for Waymo and Cruise if they're operating a few hundred or even a few thousand vehicles. But if we're talking millions of vehicles, what I wonder if we'll see is that decision goes not first to a human, but to Dojo. Instead of using the compute on board, it could say, here's all, here's the last two minutes telemetry and or uh, video if needed. What do I do? And Dojo would say, uh, I've got a 98% certainty this is the outcome. And if it's lower than that, I'll kick it to a human. And I think that would be certainly that that will help. But um, yes, you're thinking about scalability of millions of cars. I would really like to see Tesla. I mean, even though Elon likes to talk about a, a switch will be, he'll flip a switch in 5 million cars. It's not really going to work that way. It's going to work uh a few cars just like their betas go gradually so we could go two levels the the car without the steering wheel figures things out and then it calls the human and then like you say if it's millions of cars and they have a thousand humans in austin trying to do that and that's getting to be a lot of humans then sure, put Dojo in exactly as you described so that you don't have to have so many humans. Um, so yeah, that's an excellent idea. I actually had not heard. Um, oh, so I'm, 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 lo I'm loaded with these great ideas. Yeah. What? I'm loaded with great ideas. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> the, the problem is I make so many videos, no one can keep up. And that's not true. There are several people I know who I've met who are like, no, no, I've caught every video. And I always say, wow, that's, I'm just always impressed when I meet people in real life and they'll say things that make clear that they actually do watch my videos. I forget that, you know, I see the view counts and all that, but I forget that people actually are, uh, are, find value in what we do. There is another economic concept that I want to bring up. Uh, once again, the bulls always talk about that uh, Pony AI and Waymo, they, they can't be successful because they can't scale and only Tesla can scale. And of course, the only way to solve this is with the data mm -hmm. Tesla has. Right. Um, I've been in computing enough to know that there's been an, a lot of arrogant companies that thought they had the lid on everything. They had the market all wrapped up and all, uh, I remember when search engines were coming out, nobody was gonna catch AltaVista because they had the most computing power 
And uh, somehow Google came up with a different algorithm. And uh, I don't know, somehow overtook Alta Vista. I don't know how it happened. Um, well, nobody will unseat Motorola. They are the undisputed king. Well, I guess Nokia. Well, I guess who? Because everything is subject to change. And that's a, it's important to not have a, a blind spot so big that you can't see the competition coming. There are a lot of companies in China working very aggressively uh, in a bit of a fast and loose regulatory environment. And, and a number of those could stand to make huge gains uh, over Tesla, Cruise, Waymo, Mobileye, and the rest. The uh, Another argument I'll hear, and I'm not a fan of LiDAR, uh, but I do give it some chance of, of helping. Uh, I know it is, you know, it's been described by Elon and others as a, as a crutch, but they'll say, well, LiDAR destroys the economics because it's so expensive. Well, there's been many people that uh, are working on cheaper LiDARs. In fact, I believe there's a LiDAR in your iPhone, um, you know, that only costs a buck or two. Um, not saying it's automotive quality, but uh, right. So, you know, that's one possibility. Uh, an economic argument is let's say uh, someone like Waymo or Chinese company, doesn't really matter who they are, they do the HD maps of 1% of the United States. I think that's probably realistic, but they do it of the 1% that I want to go to, the cities, right. the interstates, the, the major areas. They might be able to do that and then they get the economics, they get they drive the Uber price down to 50 cents a mile. Uh, if they have either don't use LIDARs or use cheaper LIDARs and have a cheaper vehicle, that could happen before Tesla solves FSD. And, oh, the price has already gone down to 50 cents a mile. We still don't have FSD going. And we're spending 10, 20, 30 billion a year with almost no revenue coming in. Uh, one of the things people say is, oh, as it gets closer, the take rate will improve. As long as I have to supervise it, it doesn't get valuable for me. I can't use my phone. I can't check an email. I can't. It, it doesn't have value till it goes unsupervised. Right. And there is a, a monumental gulf between being allowed to do something else and being required to supervise. So it doesn't matter how many more nines you add, if I can't check my phone, if I can't send a text message, it's the added utility is limited. Now the argument that it's too expensive to do LiDAR, 10 years ago, definitely true. Today may be true, but not for all applications. If that sensor suite costs 10 or $20,000 extra, there are countless use cases where that's still cheaper and a much better deal. I don't buy that part of it. What I see is potential reliability issues, which could be worked on. Um, and if one of those LIDAR go out, can it still operate? Can it drop the passenger off so they can get a different vehicle coming right behind them and uh, get safely back to home base for repairs? If it can't, that's a whole new set of problems. And of course, Tesla doesn't quite address that. When you lose one camera on your on your vehicle, you do not have uh, autonomy. Uh, so that's a, a thing to address. Although cameras uh, can be uh, made ri robust a lot easier than something with a moving part like a LiDAR. Well, in the comments, what I wanna know is when do you guys think it's coming? What are the remaining obstacles? And uh, what do you think of my crazy idea about Dojo being the supervisor for most cases? I mean, if that's something they do, they could start with human supervising and see what Dojo had suggested in that time and determine how good it is. Uh, so uh, I do want to say a huge thanks to Paul for coming on. Uh, he's a great guy. We had a chance to hang out at CES this year uh, for just a few hours and then just a few days because, you know, we had fun. So uh, uh, in the comments, let us know. What did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, like, subscribe, do the usual, and everybody else stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when I return from Monterey and head back on the road for the X Takeover in San Luis Obispo.